Just about everyone gravitates towards those maximum speed drivers, especially when they start out, but there actually couldn't be a worse disc for a new player to start throwing. Here are five reasons why you should throw slower discs. The speed rating on a disc is how aerodynamic the disc is, but it can also be seen as a speed requirement, where you have to reach that speed before the disc will have the rest of its characteristics that it's designed to fly like. So if you have a disc that's maximum speed or rated speed is faster than your maximum arm speed, you're not going to be able to get the optimal flight out of that. Whereas one slower, you're going to be able to get it up to speed, get the ideal flight and access the glide that it has, and that can end up going farther in a lot of cases. So here's an example of an Escape and a Raider. The Escape is a 9 speed and the Raider is a 12 speed, whereas if I throw both of these fairly slowly, the Raider is going to fade out a lot sooner because it has a lot more speed. But the Escape is going to get up to speed, so it's going to be able to turn, access the glide, and get a lot farther down the fairway. Right. When discs are flying, they're actually flying relative to the wind, not relative to the ground. So if a lower arm speed player is used to throwing a fast and understable disc, but they're not able to get it up to speed so it flies more stable, but they throw that disc in a headwind, all of a sudden that disc will get up to speed and that won't be nearly as reliable as a slower, more stable disc that they are able to get up to speed that is going to be a lot more predictable in that wind. And it's going to end up with roughly the same flight shape, it's just one is going to be a lot more consistent. A nose up throw is something that just about all of us have struggled with at some point or another. And nose up is actually exaggerated by faster discs. If you compare a slightly nose up distance driver compared to a slightly nose up mid range, and then you look at what their profiles should be, you can see the mid range mostly has a pretty similar profile, but the distance driver has a big difference. So the distance driver is going to fly a lot less ideally compared to what it's designed to do. So if you're struggling with the nose up throw and you're just looking for some consistency, throwing a slower disc is going to have a lot better results. Most pros, when they need that straight shot, will throw a putter or a mid-range. And that's because the putters and mid-ranges are a lot easier to get to fly straight compared to a driver. Something with a wide rim has to fly on a lot of different angles at just the right timing to get that dead straight flight. And so putters and mid-ranges generally have a lot more control in the woods. And in the open, because putters and mid-ranges will slow down more in the air, they will not hit the ground with as much speed. So you're less likely to see a big skip at the end of the flight from a putter or a mid, whereas the distance driver is going to come in with a lot more speed and that wide rim helps it catch an edge and you can really get some big flare skips out of some big distance drivers. If you're playing a course that has a lot of different distances and you're trying to use just one big distance driver for all of the shots that you need, you can get kind of consistent at controlling the different levels of power. But doing that usually doesn't mean that you're able to focus on your form or get as clean of a throw every time because you're focused exactly on the release velocity. Whereas a much more consistent way to play is to throw everything at uh, the same velocity. For me, that's about 80 or 85%. And at that speed, I can just change the disc and that will change the distance that I throw. If I only want to go about 300 feet, then I'll throw a putter. But if I need to get a little bit over that, I can throw a mid range or a little bit more than that. I can throw a fairway driver and it'll be the same speed, the same throw for me. I can focus on doing the exact same thing and creating that throw as repeatable as possible. And I don't have to worry about scaling back my power as much as I would if I were to throw one big distance driver. Whereas if you throw one big distance driver and have to scale it back, that can be a lot less consistent. So I would not be able to do that if I didn't have those slower discs and I wasn't comfortable with that in my bag. So even if you have your go-to driver that you think is, is gonna be the most consistent shot, I would encourage you to try throwing some slower discs and focus on getting a full throw and trusting that the disc is gonna do the work to control the distance rather than you having to do that with your release velocity. So those are our five reasons that you should try throwing some slower discs. Let us know some of your favorite slower discs to throw down in the comments and make sure you subscribe for more tips from Dynamic Discs on how to become a better disc golfer. We'll see you next time.